Hey guys, today I'm going to show you five quick ways you can make your ggplast look better. And you can go from something like this into something like this. So let's get started. So I've got this data frame called avocado data. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And you can see we've got three columns here, the date, a region, and an average price. So my goal is to build a ggplot that looks good, but shows the average prices over time by these five different regions. So I'm going to go back to our code and start building out our plot. We're going to grab our avocado data frame. We're going to pipe that into the ggplot function, set our aesthetics. So the date is on the x-axis, the average price is on the y-axis, and we're going to color by that region variable. So we get five different lines. And then we just need to add one more layer, which is the geom line to show that this is going to be a line plot. So if we go ahead and run this, you can see we get this pretty basic plot, doesn't look too impressive. So that brings us to number one, which is going to be adding labels to our plot. And by labels, I mean titles, subtitles, axes titles, etc. This is the easiest single fix you can do to improve your plots. And I recommend overwriting any of the axes that you see that use variable names, like this average price right here, just because it might be confusing to your viewer. So to add our labels, we're going to go ahead and add another layer to our plot called labs. And we're going to pass in a title, a subtitle, an X for our X axis, Y for our Y axis, and a color, which we'll rename this legend right here. Now, if we had a box plot and we wanted to color the different box plots, this would be fill equals region. And again, this would be fill down here if we wanted to rename that legend. But because we're coloring these lines and it's a color, we're going to go ahead and name this region just like that. So if we go ahead and run this, you can see that we now have some labels on our graph and it looks already a lot better. And it's a lot more clear what we're looking at. So now let's move on to tip number two, which is setting a theme for our plot. Now we could build our own theme from the ground up, but there are a lot of themes already out there. So let's just use one of those. The ggplot library actually has some themes by default, but there's another library called ggthemes. So we're gonna load that in. And if you don't have this, you just have to install .packages GG themes with quotes around GG themes. Once we load this in, we should gain access to all the themes within that library. So here are a couple themes from GG themes. You can see that there are a lot of options. The one I like to use is called 538 from the 538 website. So we'll go ahead back to our code and add another layer called theme 538. And if we run this, you can see that it kind of changed up our background. It moved the legend down here. So it does a lot for us, which is a lot easier than having to rewrite the theme from the ground up, but it did remove the X and Y axis titles. So in order to add those back in, we just need to add another argument after this called theme, which will essentially modify any kind of visual changes with your graph and axis title, which were the elements that disappeared. They were set to blank by this 538 theme. We want to make sure that those text appears. So we're gonna add element text. And now if we rerun this, you see that we get back the date and the average price titles that we added before. And now we can move on to tip number three, which is emphasizing your data. Essentially, you want to make your data really visible because by default, the lines on ggplot are kind of thin, they're hard to see. And in addition, if there's any data you want to stand out, we're going to do that too. So there are three ways we're going to emphasize our data. The first is making the lines thicker. Right now, they're kind of thin. The second is adding some opacity. So making some of these lines a bit more transparent. And the third is using different line types to differentiate our data. So let's say theoretically, I wanted to highlight this Northeast line, the yellow line at the top. One thing I could do is keep this line solid, but make the four other lines dotted. So let's do that first thing and start by making the lines thicker. This is pretty easy. We just need to go up back to the geom line and change the size to 1.5. And we also want to, like I mentioned, add some opacity to our lines. So we're going to change the alpha to 0.8. If we run this, you can see it makes those two changes. And now where these lines overlap, you can see that they actually do overlap each other and the lines are going through each other. And then I just wanted to use different line types to differentiate our data. So let's do that really quick. Now, the way we have to do this is actually we need to add a new column to our avocado data frame so the ggplot can distinguish the Northeast region from the four other regions. Now, the easiest way to do this is right after our avocado data line, we're going to use this dplyr library to 
call the mutate function, which essentially adds a new column just right onto our data frame. And this new column is going to be called is northeast. And we're just going to check for the condition where this region column is equal to northeast. And that's super simple. We just need to write region equals equals northeast. And then we can just pipe this into our ggplot function. Now, once we've created this new is northeast condition, we're going to go down to our geom line and say AES to call our aesthetic line type equals is northeast. And now it'll know to differentiate based on our two different groups, the is northeast is true or is northeast is false. And then the last, last thing we need to do is add another argument down here called scale line type manual. This gives us access to these different types of lines. And we're going to pass in values equals C dashed and then solid. Essentially, if we didn't have this line, even though ggplot knows that the northeast is different from these four other lines, it would still keep them all solid because we're not really telling it to do anything. So by passing in dashed and solid, it's going to take all those values that are false, so these four lines down here, and make them dashed lines and keep the top one, the northeast one that's true, solid. Now if we run this, that looks pretty good. We've got our dashed lines down here. But I don't really want this legend to show up, so I'm also going to pass in another argument that says guide equals none. And now when I run this, it should remove that one legend while keeping our color legend down here. Now we're going to move on to tip number four, which is adding color to our ggplot. Now by default, there are some ggplot colors that are included. I'm not a huge fan of them, so we're going to change that up. My graph is about avocados, so I'd love to get some avocado colors or earth tones into this graph. And I have a couple of options of doing that. I could either find a color palette in this list of ggplot color palettes, or I can go to Chrome, search for color picker, and then pick out five colors and get their hex values. So let's say theoretically, I like this set one colors. All I need to do is add an argument down here called scale color brewer. And palette would be set one. Now, again, because this is a line plot, uh, and I'm coloring by the region, you're going to have to use scale color brewer. But if this was a box plot, we would be filling by the region, and this would be scale fill brewer. So it's important to note that distinction. But if I run this, it'll change up my colors into this color palette. But I'm not a huge fan, so I'm going to go ahead and pick some manual colors. And now I pasted those colors right up here. So I'm just going to call this my colors. You can see it's just a simple vector that I've concatenated, just a few strings. I'm going to run this my colors command to create it. And now instead of doing the scale color brewer using one of the predefined color palettes, I'm going to write scale color manual. And the values is going to be this my colors variable that I've created. So if I run this, you can see these are the colors I've chosen. And I think it just much better goes with the data that I'm trying to present. So we're almost at the end. I'm going to give you the fifth and final tip which is changing the font of your ggplot. Now this is a minimal change, but it can give your plot a lot more character. So I'm going to use the help of another library called extra font, and I'm going to load that in. And if you, again, if you don't have this package, you just need to install that packages extra font with quotes and quotes around it. The first time you load in this library, you need to call this command font underscore import. This will take some time to run, but it'll essentially load in all your system fonts into R so you can use them. I've already done that. Once you've loaded in those fonts, you can see what you have by calling this fonts command, and it'll show you in your console all the installed fonts you have. So I want to try using this Rubik font. I think that would look pretty cool on my graph. Now all we need to do to use this font on our ggplot is modify the theme. So when we added this theme 538, you can see it changed from that other font to Helvetica. And just like we modify the theme by adding back our axes, we can modify the font by writing text equals element text, family equals Rubik. And this is the font I want to use, but again, you can use any font that's installed down here. Let's go ahead and run that. And I think this plot looks way better than what we started with. So just to summarize the five ways to make your GG plots look better, you need to add some labels, set a theme, make the data stand out, change the colors, and change the font. These five things are relatively easy to do, but together, 
they can turn a really basic looking ggplot into something a lot more professional and clean. So that pretty much wraps up this video. If you found these tips helpful, I definitely appreciate a like, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.